Hey everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and in this episode, we're going to be building the Marble Tank from Time for Machine. Who are they? Well, they're brand new to the puzzle model industry, bringing their very own unique wood and metal models to the table, all of them featuring some kind of motion and or interactivity, which is really cool. Now, Groove Builders, they also advertise themselves as a premium brand, which, if you ask me, leaves us with a few questions. One, is the marble tank worth the hype? Two, is it worth the money? And three, is it really time for machine? These are all great questions. Let's begin our investigation on the workbench. Groove Builders, welcome to the workbench. We have our time for machine marble tank here in some really awesome packaging. I would even go as far as saying this is the best packaging for a metal model I've ever seen. Let's not waste any time and open it up. Oh wow, look at that. The first thing we have here is our instruction booklet, or novel as it might be. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. Wow, this looks completely different than what we're used to. Let's keep going, Groovers. Then we have our metal. I think this is actually an accordion sleeve, so let me see if I can get that all out. Oh wow, and our tools too. That looks really cool. But inside of here, yeah, look at this. This is all of our metal. That looks awesome, Groove Builders, and it looks really thick too. Let's not waste any time, get into our instruction booklet and start building. Grabbing our tools and our metal, we begin to pop out our first couple of pieces for our marble tank. And like I said earlier, this metal is way thicker than what we're used to dealing with. And because of that, there's a lot of little leftover pieces of metal on our parts from when we take them out of their metal sheet. Those tiny pieces of metal are called spurs, and you're going to need to file them down with your rasp. For entertainment and time purposes, you're not going to see me using the rasp too much as we go along, but believe me, I am definitely filing all of my parts down. Because this model is a mechanical model, you don't want any of these little pieces of metal getting in the way of this tank moving. So filing all your parts down and making sure they're smooth is absolutely critical. Now Groovers, I know a lot of you out there are very interested in the Time for Machine instruction booklet for the Marvel tank. So let's not waste any more time and take a look at it together. R2? R2, that's not the instructions. But I do like where you're going with this, the maximum gun on the Marvel tank. But that's gonna have to wait till later, buddy. Show us the instructions. Ha, ah, there we go. Thanks, R2. The Time for Machine Marvel tank assembly instructions. Warning, please read these instructions carefully before assembly and use. Ahem, <clears throat> sorry about that. My voice gets a little bit weird sometimes when I read titles. Let's go ahead and read this warning together. When assembling this model, avoid rushing or pointing it at your face or anyone else's face. If one of the parts has a sharp edge, please file it down. Use the pliers and additional tools that come with the kit to assemble the model. Each kit contains a cloth for wiping and polishing the model down once it's assembled. If need be, you may apply a small amount of silicone-based grease to the spring and mechanism. However, this is not required for the mechanism to function properly. The mechanism will perform at its best in the absence of excessive friction and excessive use of parts. Okay, Groove Builders, so what it's saying here is, is we gotta make sure that this thing can run very smoothly, and that once we do have it working, we really don't wanna overuse it because this will wear down the parts. So this model does have some limitations and we need to keep that in mind as we're going through this build. On the next page, at the top, we get a good look at our five sheets of metal. Here we get to see every single part that we're gonna be working with. Pretty neat, right? But you're really not gonna need this page as we go to find your parts. You see the team over at Time for Machine have included with each step the sheet number and part of what you're gonna need for that step. Very convenient if you ask me. No page flipping here. Next on the bottom left we have our spring. In Groove Builders I recommend keeping it in its wrap until we need it. And once cutting it open and allowing the spring to unravel, make sure you follow the instructions very closely as to where the spring is supposed to go in its wrap. This is a very crucial part of the build and it's very easy to mess up. So definitely take a little bit extra time on that step. Then just to the right we have our tool section. Now in our kit, we get pliers and the previously mentioned rasp and cleaning cloth. 
The pliers that come with this kit are perfect for shaping all of our parts, and they even have cutters on them, which unfortunately are completely useless for getting all of our parts out of our sheets. But because our metal sheets are so thick, it's very easy to bend all of our parts out without deforming them. Next, we have our gears, which are three millimeters thick and responsible for our tank moving around. I personally recommend double checking all of your gears before you install them, making sure they're in the proper orientation and that you're actually securing them the proper way. Because the Marvel tank requires such precision when it comes to building, having one of your gears installed improperly can mean that the whole tank won't work. And especially at the end when you have all the detail placed on the Marvel tank, it will be very hard to get back at the gears to fix your mistakes. Then finally, on the far right hand side of the page, we have some information on how to properly secure our nodes and our fasteners. Now Groove Builders, this is a very important part. Unlike any other metal model build we've done in the past, here you don't want to fully bend any of the nodes. Not at all. You actually just want to slightly bend them. If you go a full 90 degree bend on any of the nodes, you actually run the risk of breaking them. And I think it's because the metal is so thick. So make sure that when you're bending these nodes, just to slightly bend them. This will also make it easier for you to take apart the model if you need to, to make any adjustments. The way we secure our fasteners is very important because oftentimes this method is used to secure our gears. Our gears need to be solid and you don't want them wobbling around. So make sure that you really crimp these tight, especially on that transmission bar in the back. It's very important that both cogs on either side of the transmission spin freely but have no wobble. If they do have a wobble, you want to make sure that you secure those fasteners a little bit better. Having any kind of play in your gears left and right will result in the gear slipping, meaning that you'll lose all the power inside of your tank. And that's no good at all. This is normally where I say that we're finished with our instructions. However, this build is definitely more complicated than our average metal build and actually has specific instructions for certain steps along the way. Let's take a look at the one for the track. As you can see, I've already gone and formed all of mine, but it's very important that you take your time with each one of these bits of track. You want to take each side and bend them straight up 90 degrees. Then take another piece of track and insert the pegs into the clip. Once everything is good to go, you want to secure the pegs into the clips by twisting the tabs on either side. Groovers, it's very important to make sure that these cannot come out. If you find the pegs are easily slipping out of the clips, just readjust the tabs on either side. Once we've connected together 43 pieces of track and we've ensured that everything moves freely, we can go ahead and lay it down onto the instruction booklet. We need to make sure that the length of our track is 36.6 centimeters. If you find your track to be a little bit short of the marker, don't worry. Just give your track a little bit of a pull. That should stretch it just enough to meet the proper measurement. Once you have the proper size track, go ahead and connect the ends. Now give your track a little bit of a roll. Is it smooth? Great, then you're ready to move on to the next step, which in my opinion is kind of difficult. It's the speed adjustment. This is the part of the build where all the parts you've formed so far get placed into the tank and arranged so they work properly. This is the time where it's very important to double check all of your cogs and make sure the teeth are in the proper spot. Now when it comes to our speed adjustment, how we formed that earlier will have a big impact on how it needs to be placed in the tank. What do I mean by that? Well, once everything is together, it's time to test your tank to see if you can go fast and slow. What I recommend doing is putting your tank immediately on the slowest setting and then letting it go, seeing if it will actually tick through. If your tank isn't making a ticking sound similar to a clock, then something's not right and you need to do troubleshooting. I would start by looking at my speed adjustment to make sure that the speed adjuster isn't just sitting on the cog. Then I would look at my transmission to make sure that the gears aren't slipping off the back. This seemed to be the issue with my tank, so I went to the back and made sure that all of my cogs were properly secured on spot. And after a couple of more tests, it worked out just fine. I think we're pretty much done. Let's test this guy out.
<laughs> we did it, Groove Builders. We built the Marble Tank from Time for Machine. And this build is unlike any other build in our collection. If you're looking to build it yourself, there are a few things you're going to want to know. Let's talk about those things in construction. My first point when it comes to building the marble tank is to make sure you pay extra close attention to the instructions. With this particular build, because there are moving parts inside, it's very important to make sure that all of your pieces line up correctly and of course are properly orientated. If they're not, well, you'll put everything together and then you'll wind it up and it won't work. In Groove Builders, I don't know about you, but I really don't want to take apart this tank just to fix one piece, so make sure you pay really close attention the first time. My second point when it comes to building the marble tank is about the transmission in the back. Now Groovers, this particular build allows you to have both neutral and drive, but when building this particular part, you have to be very careful to make sure that all the gears are working correctly. Not only do you have to have one of the gears spinning freely, but also you want to have a minimal wobble as possible because when you're engaging the drive and neutral patterns, sometimes it may slip. So make sure that all of these are extremely tight and you'll have a really good end result. For my third and final point, I wanna talk about the tools that come with the Marvel Tank. Now, one of my favorite tools is this little rasp right here. This guy is amazing. Because of all your parts coming from a metal sheet, little bits of metal are left on the edges. And because this has moving parts, those edges are your enemy. This little guy right here is what you use to file down those little burrs to make them really smooth. In Groove Builders, that's a very important part of this build, especially with the tracks up here at the top and all the gears with inside. If things can't move freely, well, your tank's not going to move either. So Groove Builders, really make sure that you take your rasp here and work all those little burrs out. Now, for the most part, everything you need to build this tank does come inside the kit. However, having some extra pliers around will help you with some of the smaller bends you're going to need to do, especially because this metal is so thick. Also, having some tweezers around will help you make some gaps a little bit bigger when the parts are just too tight to put together. It'll help you with the gear shafts for sure. And with that being said, Groove Builders, let's move on to build time. The Marvel Tank from Time 4 Machine took me just over eight and a half hours to build. And to be totally honest, group builders, I could have taken way more time. This build is really unlike any other build I've done before. And as I was going, one thing I really realized, it's extremely important to pay very close attention to detail, which is something I think I've mentioned now a few times. And Groovers, if you're rushing this build, you're really going to mess up. I mean, this is just a build that you cannot rush. So please take your time if you actually end up buying one of these and you'll be really impressed by what you have in the end. And finally, Groove Builders, my thoughts. Now, I know I've already said this once, but I'm gonna say it again. The Marvel Tank is unlike any other metal build that we've done here on the show. And to be totally honest, I think this is in a complete different class than any other metal models out there. And the reason for that is not just because of their really thick metal, but because of the actual build itself. It's just so unique, and there's so many unique things you're gonna to need to know in order to be able to complete this construction. For instance, all of our tabs that we use to secure our tank are actually only turned at a fraction of a turn. If you turn any more than that, like you would say on a normal metal model at 90 degrees, you actually run the risk of snapping the tab in half, even though they're incredibly thick. Some other things, like I mentioned earlier, are the rasp. All the little burrs on here are very important to make sure that you get off. If you don't get those off, your tank isn't going to function properly. And when you pay $130 in some cases for a model like this, you really want it to work right the first time. And now we're back to those three questions we asked at the beginning of the show. Does the Marvel tank meet the hype? In my personal opinion, yeah. It does everything it says it's going to do in the commercial, and now holding it in my hand, it feels like a premium product. I will display this very proudly on my desk, and when people want to see it work, I'll be more than happy to wind them up. So it definitely meets the hype. Is it worth the price tag? Well, as a Canadian guy here, this is $130 Canadian. And to be totally honest, holding it in my hand and looking at it for the last three days on my desk, absolutely. If you're a metal model collector out there, you owe it to yourself to pick up one of these models. But keep in mind, it's not like any other metal model out there. You'll need to take your time with these ones, Groovers. So now we're left with that final question. Is it really time for machine? Well, in my opinion, yeah. This team has brought fresh breath to the metal and wood model industries, not just with their unique builds, but also their premium quality. 
I'm really excited to see what other metal model companies are going to do to try to compete with these guys. But with them already coming out with another two models this year, you better believe that I'm going to be featuring a couple of more of these on this channel. And with that, Groove Builders, we're at the end of our show. I had a really good time building the Marble Tank with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well as we've got all kinds of really cool, unique builds just like this coming up in the future. Until next time, Groove Builders, keep building. Now, I think this will look really good next to Godzilla. What do you think? <laughs>